Hi, Scott here from the Modeling Systems team. Today I'm going to be talking a bit about the different optimization options that we can have in our Fortran compilers. So the optimization levels are specified by the dash O flag. So if we go I4 dash O, then you want to specify a number from zero, which is no optimization, to three, which is the highest amount of optimization that the compiler can do. Um, the default level is two, so that's all the default optimizations. It will um, do things with loops, it'll inline any small functions. Um, so generally what the different optimizations you'll use are dash O, which is no optimization. So this is mainly helpful in debugging because uh, the optimization can in some, some circumstances reorder your code uh, compared to the way you've written it. So it'll still evaluate the same, but looking through the debugger, it will jump around a lot. So dash O will stop that. Um, there's dash O2, which should be your default optimization level, as well as dash O3. So dash O3 does a lot higher optimization. However, it will take a lot longer to compile. Um, and it may not give in, every, in all cases the same results for the same inputs. So it, it can reorder it reorder the evaluation within the program. Uh, so yeah, you generally we're going to be wanting to use dash O2. There's another option you can use for optimization which is dash X host. Um, so each generation of processor has different um, special instructions that it can use. So there's the SSE instructions which are uh, like a vector vector instruction set so it will do operations on four numbers at a time and more recent more recent uh, compilers have things called like AVX which is even more so it'll do eight eight operations at a time and AVX2 so all of these extra instruction sets if you want to take advantage of these you'll need to use uh, something like dash x host uh, this will compile with any instructions available on your current CPU. So, th so what that means is if you try and run the program you build using the dash x host flag on a CPU that doesn't support this, so if you're running it on, on an older processor, um, the binary may not work. So that's something to consider, but it will take advantage of any of the special instructions available on the CPU that you're compiling on. So for instance, Ryogen, um, if you compile it with dash x host, it will run faster on any of the compute nodes, but you may not be able to take that program from Ryogen and run it on your own computer. There's another optimization option, which is called dash fp model. So this says what it does, what optimizations it can do with uh, floating point operations. So if we set, we can have a few options here. The main two are fast. So what fast means is it can reorder um, floating point operations. And then there's precise, where it will always do exactly what you specify. So if you specify brackets um, in an evaluation, it will do that in the exact order you specify. So let's take a look at what that means. Okay, so what we've got here is a small little test program. So what it's doing, it's defining three real numbers, A, B, and C. Then it's adding them up in different ways. So since uh, addition is associative, you'd expect both of these evaluations, A plus B plus C and A plus B plus C, to both give the same answer. And since it's adding 1 by 10 to the 30 with negative 1 by 10 to the 30, which is 0 and 1. We'd expect these both to be 1. So let's see what happens when we compile it. FP model fast is the default. And that should... No, I don't think that's two dashes. So 
So we can see that these both evaluate to one, to one as we expect. Let's try doing that with FP model precise and see what happens. Okay, so here we get two different answers. So the reason for this is um, basically because of how floating point operations work. Uh, there's only a limited range that each value can each value can be. So if we add a very large number with a very small number, the result will be the very large number. So if we had 1 by 10 to the 30 plus 1, that's going to be 1 by 10 to the 30, uh, just because these floating point numbers only have a limited number of bytes in the computer to store them, so you, it doesn't store them to infinite precision. So it, when you add a very large number and a very small number, the small bit gets truncated, so this, this is evaluated to uh, 10, 10 to the 30, and or negative 10 to the 30, and adding 10 to the 30 with that is 0. Uh, the reason it didn't happen when we used FP model fast is because it reordered this operation. So because it because addition is associative and it's using fast optimization, what it probably did was just get the result from this calculation, since it's already been calculated by the compiler, and just printed out that result. Um, so you can see you've got different behavior here. If you're wanting ex if you're wanting to make sure it's doing exactly what you specify in the um, in the source code, you will be wanting to use FP model precise. This is important mainly if you're trying to get your results to be reproduced exactly every time you run it. So it will make sure every time you run every every time you calculate a number, it will do it in exactly the same in exactly the same way, instead of optimizing it and if it's calculated something similar before which would be associatively the same um, using that value.